I just want to look just stay on the bank losses for for a moment. I think so 22 23 the loss is 3.1 billion is that is that correct? So there's there's a a little bit of a transposition um, our year end and Department of Finance's year end don't match up, but if you're looking at the public accounts number, that's the correct number. Yeah. Uh, and the year prior, how does a bank lose do you, money? Uh, I don't have the number in front of me, but was there a loss know, reported in in the year prior? Public accounts. I'm going to turn to my 21, 22. I have 22, 23 numbers with me. Um, you don't have them. Okay. I, I I don't think so. That's okay. Uh, but it's oh sorry. Us. We had a surplus in the public accounts of $2.3 billion. <clears throat> All right, so we went from a surplus in 21-22 to a loss in 22-23, and the expectation is for a, a, a loss again in this next year, correct? Craziness. Okay. And my understanding is that the loss is actually very sensitive to the prevailing interest rates. That is, if the interest rate goes down, the losses will shrink. Is that correct? Okay. But if the interest rate stays where it is or goes up, the losses will grow, correct? Correct. As you said, okay. it's sensitive to interest rates. Yeah. So, and the projection, the government's projections are that interest rates will actually go down. So the government is projecting its fiscal track or its fiscal um, uh, health that interest rates will actually fall. But if interest rates just stay the same, that means the loss will actually be bigger than what the government projects. Is that correct? I, I'm not able to speak for the government's projection. I'll, I'll maybe ask my colleagues to do that. Yeah. We, we have a limited ability to forecast Crown Corporation income into the future, but what you've described as the general relationship between interest rates holds. Okay. But... Uh, but the Department of Finance does have a projection for losses of the bank going forward, does it not? We do. Okay. Yeah. Um, that projection was not shared in the budget. I'll note that the Bank of Canada losses were consolidated with the government's Canada Mortgage Bond Program. I, I'll ask the, the bank. That wasn't your choice to not to, or the, excuse me, that wasn't your the bank's choice to consolidate that line item in the budget, correct? You weren't consulted on that? Not that no. we're aware okay. of. Okay. Um, so for the finance department, like negative $3 billion is a relatively material number. Um, it would be very helpful for committee members and parliament if we knew what the government projects these bank losses to be in the future. Is that something you could provide the committee? It is. For the presentational purposes in the budget, as you say, we aggregate with other yeah. Crown corporations, but we're able to follow up and ready. Okay. Thank you very much. That would be very helpful. Um, now, part of the other reason there's losses is because the bank purchased government bonds, right? So this is mm -hmm. a direct result of the, the quantitative bonds. easing yep. activities that the bank undertook, correct? And they're still COVID. not even tightening yet. There's no okay. QT yet. Um, definitely look forward to the projections of the losses. Uh, if, if I may, I'll just switch uh, gears a little bit and talk about M2 money supply. I saw a chart that's showing the Bank of Canada's balance sheet shrinking over time, which is, makes sense, right? Quantitative tightening. Yep. But I also have seen a chart showing M2 is actually growing. And I'm trying to understand why that's the case. If the bank is shrinking the balance sheet, how is the measure of M2 growing? Like, where's the money coming from? So uh, there's different definitions of the supply of money, and they measure different things. So M2... Um, he knows the definition of M2. Uh, ...would largely you don't grow have to explain or it. shrink according to demand for loans at banks. So, so M2, I think of M2 as the uh, supply of money that's um, uh, generated by commercial banks. So as, um, as there is an increase in demand for loans... Banks can increase the supply of M2 by, by providing more loans. Those loans ultimately end up in savings accounts and, and other places around the economy. Generally, the demand for credit has been coming down, and 
the M2 numbers are relatively low over a historical perspective, so they, you know, they are lower, but but okay. they would not. You wouldn't necessarily see those show up on our balance sheet. Okay, thank you. Two two quick follow ups on that. Yeah. Um, Ask about is it possible that the government's borrowing activities, which are very substantial, not the rollover in debt per year, but the new funds required of $102 billion this year and $63 billion last year are contributing to the growth of M2? Um, That's not, a demand for credit? Not directly, I guess okay. indirectly. So potentially yeah. indirectly. And then last question, Mr. Chair. Uh, it would be very helpful if the components of M2, is it something that you'd be able to sh share with the committee the parts of M2 that are growing um, that we might be able to kind of just understand, try to figure out where the money's sure, coming yeah, from? I think we can probably do that. Okay. Yep. Thank you very much. Appreciate yep. your time. Thank you. Second round, Mr. Shear, you have the floor for five minutes, please. Thanks very much, Mr. Chair. Um, Ms. Rogers, uh, you gave a, a speech a little while ago about productivity, and I just want to make sure I totally understand what productivity means, because I know there's a lot of jargon and term that gets uh, thrown around here, but productivity, as I understand it, is is how much Canadians produce, how much trees they turn into lumber, how much grain they grow, how many cars roll off the assembly line. It's basically the things that individual Canadians make. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, as a function of the inputs it takes to make them. Yeah. And I think you also said in your speech that low productivity has a negative effect on inflation. In, in, in other words, it, it's it, uh, low productivity will have the effect of having higher inflation for longer if, if Canada doesn't start to produce more. Is that an accurate summary of...? Not exactly. No. Um, what I said in my speech is that uh, improving productivity would help us buffer the Canadian economy against what we expect to be a potentially less benign inflationary environment going forward. So, in terms of policy tools that would help productivity, can you think of some things that would encourage or facilitate Canadians being more productive, producing more things, and having more goods job. in an economy? Sure. I talked about a couple oh. of them in my speech. I mean, um, things that equip workers to be more productive in each hour they're at work, so additional training or additional tools that help workers um, produce more per hour. How about we just let um, our gas and oil sector uh, export? Additional investment in infrastructure, uh, com competitive and a competitive environment, um, uh, ensuring that we have an efficient regulatory approval process. Those are some of the examples that I used. So investments yeah. in, would investments in capital also help with productivity? Yes. So would things that would be disincentives, uh, in other words, uh, uh, policy tools that would punish investments in capital, w I would assume would then have the opposite effect, that it would, uh, it would lower productivity? You want to have, have an environment, all policies in, that encourage um, investment in capital, absolutely. Yeah, investment so lower the capital gains um, from 65 gave that speech, to like 40 uh, How long ago was it? Uh, about a month? Uh, I think so, yeah. Oh, sounds that's about what right. she's trying to say. Do you think it's still time to break the glass? Uh, it, par we haven't fixed it in the last month, if that's your okay. question. Well, the reason why I ask is because there was a budget tabled uh, just recently uh, where, uh, so would you give that same speech today? Would you, would you warn uh, people say that it's still an emergency situation? I think this, uh, as I said, we haven't fixed it in a month, to, so, so I think the speech stands. Okay. Um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the Canada mortgage bonds. Uh, I understand that the government of Canada is now purchasing, I believe it's up to $40 billion a year? It's up to a maximum of $30 billion. Up to a maximum of $30 billion. Okay, thanks for the, uh, thanks for, for the correction. Do you see any impact on the money supply by the government of Canada's bond purchase program? Hmm. Um, I don't know that if I could isolate that specific program, but... But Mr. Chambers asked us to give some uh, additional data on what's affecting the money supply, and we'll be happy to do that. Okay. And so the government of Canada will now own that mortgage debt uh, under the bond purchase program. The Bank of Canada used to buy those bonds uh, for a period of time. Uh, my understanding is the Bank of Canada ended that program, but you do act as the 
fiscal uh, the financial agent for the government of Canada to, yes. to, to purchase these these bonds. So the government of Canada will now own mortgage debt as a as a holding. My understanding. Yes, what we're doing exactly is we're what? basically borrowing money in order to buy those Canada, finance those Canada mortgage bonds. So basically, we we own some of that debt. Yeah. So so the government of Canada borrows money to buy mortgages from banks who have lent money to Canadians. Is that? Thank you for your question. Basically, the way it works, CMHC what? basically borrow money in order to buy NHMBS. So yep. those are pool of mortgages that are put together. Uh, and, and when you look at the market, the way it works, um, CMHC, when they were issuing and they're still issued, there's a spread relative to the government of Canada debt. So when you look at, at the debt that, that the, the product they're issuing, they're fully backed by the government of Canada. So they should be issuing around the same rate, right? They're a triple eight product. And because of that spread, the government decided to issue its own debt in order to finance the CMBs. So the debt that we are issuing, it's debt that, that basically CMHC doesn't have to issue on the market. But it's guaranteed by the government itself, right? So, so the, gov the government is both the backer of the debt and now the holder of the debt? That's horrible. That debt was already guaranteed prior to the issuing debt in order to buy CMBs. Thank you very much, Mr. Shear. Uh, next up, we have Ms. Yip. You have the floor for five minutes, please.